నల్ల నరసింహారెడ్డి ఎడ్యుకేషన్ సొసైటీస్ గ్రూప్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్స్ ఇంటిగ్రేటెడ్ క్యాంపస్ ఐ వెల్కమ్ ఆల్ ద సివిల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ క్యాండిడేట్స్ ఫర్ దిస్ సెషన్ ఇన్ విచ్ ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ అబౌట్ ఫాల్ట్స్ క్లాసిఫికేషన్ అండ్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ ఫాల్ట్స్ అండ్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఫాల్ట్స్ ఫ్రమ్ సివిల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ పాయింట్ ఆఫ్ వ్యూ లెట్ ఎస్ గో టు ద టాపిక్ what are faults faults which are described as fractures along which a relative displacement of adjacent blocks usually takes place this displacement caused by faulting and it may be horizontal or vertical or inclined classification of faults or types of faults are done on the basis of geometry geometry means by specifying three angular measurements such as a strike dip and slip so we know very well the parts of a fault and it was explained in the previous video lecture strike dip and slip all these three are called as angular measurements and these angular measurements is known as geometry and by considering their genesis are different principles so faults may be classified on the basis of geometry their genesis are different principles if we see the classification of faults when we consider relative moment of foot wall and a hanging wall so if we consider foot wall and a hanging wall relative moment so in this case we can find normal fault and thrust fault if we consider displacement along the fault plane for this we can find the faults which are translation fault and rotational faults if we consider mutual relation of attitudes of the fault plane then strike fault dip fault oblique fault are the examples and inclination of the fault plane if we consider then high angle fault and low angle fault are the good examples and uh, origin or mode of occurrence of faults is considered then we can find radial fault arcuate fault and n echelon fault and there are some miscellaneous faults step fault parallel fault hast and gravel fault comes under this category so start we relative moment of foot wall and hanging wall so this is these faults can be identified in case of i mean if the fault plane is inclined so this is the fault plane which is inclined here so if the hanging wall goes down see the arrow so if the hanging wall uh, goes down with respect to foot wall then it is called as normal fault see the forces tensional forces since the blocks are expected to move or sliding down along the influence of gravity so gravity is influencing it will also called as gravity fault hence normal fault is also known as gravity fault which is i mean under the influence of gravity please note this this is gravity fault or normal fault normal fault and this is gravity fault normal fault so with respect to foot wall this is the foot wall this is the fault plane so with respect to foot wall the hanging wall goes down here the gravity causes the hanging wall to slip down hence this is called as normal fault reverse fault if this hanging wall goes up with respect to 
I mean foot wall, then it is called as reverse fault. See, compressional forces are acting here. This is also called as thrust fault. So, reverse faults or thrust faults are caused by compressive stresses. Reverse fault. See, this is the geological formation. This is the geological formation. Uh, and this is the fault plane. So, this is a foot wall. This is the hanging wall. With respect to foot wall, the hanging wall goes up. Hence, it is called as reverse fault. This can be seen very clearly in the field photograph. Now, let us take the displacement, type of displacement. So, in this case, we have translation faults. So, the displacement of the foot wall with respect to hanging wall is uniform. See, uniform displacement. This is uniform. So, when the displacement is uniform with respect to the foot wall, then we say that this is a translation fault. So, we have to remember only the displacement should be uniform along the fault plane. Uniform. Rotational fault. The foot wall and the hanging wall. Both are appears to be fixed at one junction or can be seen a gradual change like this in, in displacement is called as rotational fault. That means either it may be fixed both the blocks at one point or a gradual change can be seen in the displacement. This is called rotational fault. If we consider the mutual relation of attitude of the fault plane, so we have strike fault, dip fault. If the strike, strike direction of fault plane is parallel to the strike of the beds, that means strike direction of the fault plane should be parallel to the strike of the beds. In such a case, it is called as strike fault. If the strike direction of the fault plane is parallel to the dip direction, in such a case, it is called dip fault. If the strike direction of fault plane is neither parallel to strike direction nor parallel to dip direction of the geological formations, then it is called as oblique fault. So, strike fault, dip fault, oblique fault are the examples under the category of mutual relations of attitudes of the fault plane. So, fault plane is to be considered here. Inclination of fault plane. So, based on the dip amount of the fault plane, suppose if it is steep, say more than 40 degrees, in such a case, the fault is called as high angle fault. See here, the angle is 60 degrees. Hence, this is known as high angle fault. Suppose if it is, I mean, gently sloping, I mean, less than 45 degrees, then it is called as, I mean, low angle fault. So, the angle is here, I mean, 16 degrees, for example. So, less than 45 degrees, and hence it is called as low angle fault. Based on another parameter, mode of occurrence. Here we have radial faults and arcuate faults. In case of radial faults, it occurs on the surface and appears to be radiating from a common point. This is the common point from which, I mean, the faults are occurred in different, different directions. Hence, we call this as radial faults. In case of Arcuate faults. A set of faults occur in peripheral manner, enclosing more or less a circular area. See, this is the circular area, so that each fault is in somewhat 
more or less in circular area. So coming in such a way like a peripheral. So this is called as arcade form. In natural faults, step faults, these are also belonging to miscellaneous faults. A set of faults, I mean, which appear to be overlapping one another. So, this is called as NH law. Step faults, a set of parallel faults, all these are parallel faults, I mean, occur at regular intervals. The interval is regular. Say for example, this is half a meter, half a meter, half a meter, half a meter. So, with respect to the foot wall, the hanging wall goes down. So, regular intervals when a set of parallel normal faults occur, then it is called as step faults. Parallel faults. A set of parallel faults with the same strike direction and dip direction and they are like step. This is the step but may not have regular interval. See the interval is varying from one fault to another fault. So in case of parallel faults, step like appearance can be seen without, without regular interval. Host and grab and faults. When normal faults with a mutually diverging, that means to separate and go in different directions, or converging, that means moving towards and meet at one point, then a wedge shaped block forms. This wedge shaped block is called as host and uh, are displayed upwards and a few are called as gravens. So this is a horse, this is a graven, this is a horse. So horse and graven faults are due to diverging and converging of the blocks. Effects of faults from civil engineering point of view. We know very well and it was discussed in the previous sessions, faults are unfavorable geological structures. Even to locate a reservoir or for foundation of a constructing a dam or to construct a building or a bridge or to construct a tunnel or laying a road or laying a railway track. So faults are to be studied carefully because these are unfavorable geological structures. Occurrence of fault is often accompanied by earthquakes. If there is a fault, then certainly it is accompanied by an earthquake and it is an indication of subsurface instability of that particular area. So wherever the fault is identified, then it gives an idea the occurrence of earthquakes as well as the presence of faults indicates the subsurface is having instability of that particular area. As long as the faults are active, so the site is unstable and susceptible to upward or downward movement along the fault plane. Certainly, the movement may be upward or downward. So, best examples, St. Francis Dam, California, Ashton Dam in Texas failed because both the dams were rested on the fault plains. Faults develop mainly due to tensional forces. So, like this, compressional forces, like this, I mean, rotational forces, so, may be confining stress or shear stress. Gravity faults or normal faults are believed to have been formed under the influence of tensional forces, which we discussed in the beginning, and hence such faults can be called as tensional faults.
Similarly, thrust fault or reverse faults are believed to have been formed under the influence of compressional forces. So, these faults may be called as compressional faults also. What is the evidence for faulting? So, there are some phenomena. If we study those phenomena, we can certainly get the evidence. The faulting phenomena produces dislocations in lithology and topography. Hence, study of the lithology and topography certainly provide evidences to recognize faults in the field. What are those phenomena? This is called silicon slides. Silicon slides means some of the striations or lines which are marked over the geological formations, that is lithology. So, if silicon slides are noticed, that indicates there might be a faulting phenomena to the place. Then, drag of a fault, that means deflection of curved markers. See, there is a deflection of curved markers adjacent to a fault. So, this is called a drag of fault. If a curved marker is noticed, that is another phenomenon which indicates the evidence for faulting. Brecciation. In the site or in the area, if we see the, the rock brecciation, so that indicates there is a brecciation. So, brecciation means the process of breaking down into angular fragments. You can see the angular frag fragments, which is the clear evidence for the faulting phenomena. Mineral rich zones. We find highly mineral zones along the fault plane. That is another indication for the evidence for faulting. Thank you.